profiles are an integral part of trading and understanding technical analysis because ultimately volume is what determines price movement. So a volume profile is this histogram looking thing over here on the left side. It can be over a range that you draw that you've chosen yourself, or it can be over a specified time range like a day, week, month. Um, but let's get into the different features of what a volume profile is. So the different parts of a volume profile, imagine you had 100% of the volume drawn in a histogram, as you can see over here on the left side of this picture. 70% of the total volume is what we call the value area, and that's what exists in between these blue lines right here. The other 30% of volume is divided into the top and bottom of this area. It would be 15% above and 15% below this area right here in the middle. So the value area is where 70% of the volume is traded and it's marked with these two lines here. The value area high is the top line right here. And the value area low, or the VAL, we call the value area high the VAH, the value area low, the VAL, is the lowest area of the 70% value area right here. So these lines can act as support and resistances, all right? The VPOC or point of control or the POC, VPOC, whatever you want to call it. I call, as long as you use VPOC because I want to, you know, throw out Tupac, right? And that's what it makes me think of. But the POC is the area where there's the highest volume traded in this area. That's marked with this orange line. Sometimes you'll see that we'll mark secondary POCs. And that is the area where there's the second most traded volume. Sometimes you have what's called a B pattern, which we're going to get into later in the video, um, which shows two POCs that are very similar um, in the amount of volume. So sometimes we call one POC, another one secondary POC or tertiary POC and so forth. Beside volume point of controls, you can also have time point of controls, um, which uh, is for a devoted time. And we'll also talk about that later on and how you can add that into sessions. You have another thing called a low volume node and a high volume node. Low volume node, you can think of these as the valleys. Okay. These are the areas where there's very little volume on the histogram. These are usually where you have drops, okay? This is where price rejection usually occurs as well, all right? Then another term you might hear is naked. Naked uh, usually implies untested. So amongst other things, but these are sometimes called virgin POCs. I'm not even kidding you, all right? Anyway, that's a real thing, look it up. And then some helpful abbreviations to know are, this should be, standard but d w m y q and so forth these are like daily weekly monthly because sometimes you're going to see a p before things which means past or prior so let's say you see a p w p o c that's the past weekly p o c right or the p m p o c or just the you know h p o c that'd be the hourly p o c right okay so before we get into learning how to draw these, let's take a look at the different types of volume profiles. You have what's called a D shape. Um, this is normally where, if you, these are based on the, the shape of the histogram on the left side. So this looks like a D, and this usually occurs when you just have a normal distribution, meaning that price goes up, down, up, down, and then generally you have kind of a squeeze action to either up or down. These are usually pretty standard. I also like to think of them as brass knuckles. That's what they look like to me, even though I've never worn brass knuckles before. <laughs> right? I don't think I've ever seen them before. A B shape is when the volume profile histogram kind of takes this shape where primarily the volume is at the bottom. This occurs when you have a sharp drop in the market to the downside. And as it drops through this range, you have most of your volume occurring at the bottom of the range. In this case, with these types of volume profiles, you should be looking for shorts up here at the resistance, which we call the value area high, the VAH. The P shape is the opposite. It's when you have coming from a downside and primarily in the range, all the volume is up at the top. It kind of forms a P, all right? In this case, you should be looking more for longs at the value area low. 
the B shape is there's two ways to approach this but the main way is really to just think about it as a POC and a secondary POC however you can also approach these as two value areas and then POCs inside of that but you don't really need to get into that all right so let's look at our chart the first thing is these are my settings for the fixed range volume profile um, I recommend changing your settings to these. These are probably, you can change some of the, you know, stylist, stylish components of it, but for the most part, these are to effectively see data the best, the most efficient way. So always keep vo value area volume at 70, because that's 70%. Row size is gonna be how many rows you see within the histogram, so the amount of detail. Now this down volume, I prefer to keep the up volume value up at zero because we know that we already know it's going to be there and it's going to be empty looking so you'll see what i mean but the down volume and volume area down you can kind of change these based on your own preferences i actually have kind of increased mine um because i increased the color a little bit so it's actually 70 and 50 but 50 and 30 for these colors work just fine too and then i prefer to keep mine all consistent colors the histogram box, I think is very important to make zero. Otherwise it does make the entire um, volume profile with the background. I prefer to keep my charts relatively clean. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the um, volume profile here and how you draw one. So over on the left side, you can see over here when we click this. So first you need to turn on your drawing toolbar. Over on the left side, click this little arrow to expand the prediction and measurement tools. Scroll down to the bottom and choose fixed range volume profile. Once you selected that, you can now draw a fixed range volume profile for any kind of range that you want. So what you do is you start from a range and this works horizontally from left to right. It doesn't matter if you go up or down because it's going to be based on a fixed range that you determine. So we'll start right here on the left side and we'll drag it all the way to the right. Doesn't matter if you go to the up, down, doesn't matter, okay? Now, typically when you draw these and then you click again to apply it. Typically when you draw these, you wanna draw these for ranges that are going sideways. However, you can apply them for areas where you're kind of just going up or down. It's not gonna be really that helpful though. But really you wanna draw these in ranges where you're going sideways. Now, how you approach these is that you, remember you act on the value area highs and lows and the POCs. So in this case, we kind of have like a B formation, right? So if we mark these, so this is your POC right here up at the top, this orange line, this is the area of the highest volume. So this would act as a support and a resistance. This is a really strong area of volume. And you can see more or less, even though we were moving very fast throughout this multiple times as we were pumping up and down, this more or less acted as a pretty key point to stop um, on the way up and down. Our secondary POC would be right here at this area. Again, this is another area where I would expect, you know, a lot of contention and a lot of support and resistance to happen either way. So we'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Like that. So these are your two key areas that can act as support and resistance, as well as your value area high and your value area low, which are these blue lines up at the top and the bottom. So generally, how do you trade a volume profile? So these are some of the most profitable, easy ways to trade. You literally are looking for longs at the value area low down here at the bottom. And you're looking for shorts at the value area high at the top. And that is bread and butter volume range trading right there. And if you look at this, you can see that how profitable that would have been for this entire range. If you had longed essentially down here at this line and then shorted up here at the top. If we look at our current Bitcoin chart, actually I actually have two volume profiles drawn here. So for our Bitcoin volume profile, if you look on the left side, you see how it's kind of a B shape. Most of the volume is at the bottom. And if we go back to our picture here, we look at the B-shaped one. This is when 
Um, price comes from the from the top, kind of in a sharp decline, and you're looking for more shorts at the value area high. Because this is happening in a downtrend where most of the price is consolidating at the bottom of the range. And that's kind of what we, you know, we expect because Bitcoin is going down quite a bit in this range. So most of the volume is happening down here. And this POC is a very strong area. This is how we keep nailing these um, entries. I mean, this is clear cut, right? If we even drag this back, you can see how this is um, this level was marked way before this, right? So if we draw this and we go back, right? This point of control right here, this area of volume was so high from back over here. So let me drag it back. So if we draw our volume profile back here, okay, you can see that our volume profile even drawn a whole almost month ahead of time. This is the area where there's the key volume in this range. So we still would have known the exact bottom where this is going to stop because price moves at the areas of volume. And this is why we were, you know, a lot of us got into this long right here. We expected a strong wick because this is the very strong POC here. Now, if you want to take this one step further and be a super advanced trader who's prepared for any moment, what you then do is you mark these lines for each range. So I'll give you an example. So then what you'll do is you'll mark these volume profiles like this. So we could draw one here. All right. So we have a value area high, a value area low and a POC here, right? The secondary POC right here at you know, 9,550 and yeah, 9,500, something like that. And then using your, you know, keybind or drawing tool, you could do alt H, which is the default for a line. And then what I would do is I would mark each of these. So this would be your value area high. And I would mark this with a time um, or date range to keep it all organized. So in this case, we were in this range from June 5th. 2019 to October. So June 2019. So we'll do 6 19 to 10 20 VAH. That way we know that when we come back down to this range, we already know where this key level is going to be. And I would do the same thing for this POC. Okay, I'll put 6, 619 to 1020 POC. That way, once you've marked all these key levels, you can get rid of this volume profile because it's primarily going to lag your chart having all these volume profiles everywhere. And you really don't need them because this prior range volume is not going to change until you get to this area. So then when price starts moving down, you already know where price is going to bounce, right? It's going to be bouncing at these key levels. So that way you're going to be entering at the very bottoms and being able to short at the very tops. So this is some of the work you can do ahead of time to prepare for these areas. Now you're going to say, Jay, I've got a million lines on my chart. I can't see anything. It looks like prison. So in that sense, over on the right side of the chart, There's something called an object tree at the very bottom of uh, trading view. It looks like three folders. Okay. And you can organize all of your drawings in different folders on here. Okay. So here are my current drawings for Bitcoin. If you look at the very bottom here, I've got mostly everything organized into years, 2020, 2021, 2022. And I can unhide these lines for whenever I need to see them. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom out. Let me get rid of these forks. All right, so let me go ahead and unhide these so we can see. So if you look over on the right side, I've got all these ranges marked for their key levels. 
or whenever we need to go back to a range, I can see exactly where we're going to be bouncing ahead of time so that I'm prepared and I know the key levels before we even get there. You can do this for every coin and you see that this is why most people are calling for when we drop down below 15k. You can see where we're going to be bouncing at, right? We're going to be bouncing until we get to the next area of volume, which is going to be down here. We have a value area high at 12k. We're probably going to bounce slightly above that though, because it's been a while since we've been down there. But more or less, you can see exactly where prices, price movement is going to occur before we even get there. So I think that's it for volume uh, profiles. I think that was pretty comprehensive. Um, it's a very, you know, normal part of just volume trading. Um, that's probably one of the most profitable profitable strategies that I think most traders use um, today. Uh, so give them a try. If you have any questions, please let me know. And that, that's it. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Congrats. Most people finish early, but you made it the full distance. That's awesome. If you're looking to learn how to trade crypto, check out one of these other videos.